So I'm just going to sit here and sew while you guys hang out with me. Obviously, always remember, take the paper backing out and let's rip through some hats. Obviously, the most important thing, I always drop my needle on my little stitch line that I made. And I usually will start off pretty slow just to make sure that the thread catches and then speed it on up. We've got a nice little focus right there, nice clean thread, and that took all of, I don't know how many seconds, maybe 10 seconds to sew one hat versus 45 to a minute of pressing a hat. So let's see, we've got, we're on the 15 second mark. So that was 20 seconds to sew our patches on there. So add that up. If you're doing anything else, even with our adhesive method, it's probably about a minute, maybe longer with um, getting it on there. But I've got these just tacked on here today with some, just some spray adhesive, just hold it into place. Nice, perfect threads, and it covers our little stitched border that we had made perfectly that had a little fuzz on there. So I'm gonna stop talking and just start ripping. Take a little break again to show you guys a stitch. And if you notice me pushing this little button up here, that is just the manual button. I've got my foot pedal down here. It's my gas pedal to make it go. So when I use the manual button, I'll use that to creep around the corners. make sure that one started coming up. So with the spray adhesives, what I've noticed is I did these earlier and they were really on the hats and we let them sit for a while. We had some customers in the store and as they sit, the uh, spray adhesive just loses its tackiness. So this was actually a job that I wanted to get stitched on about two hours ago. 
So just a note to self, spray adhesives do not work and they do not hold permanently. And we're even using the 3M Super 77, which is a, like a headliner spray for cars and automotive industry. And it it's great for a little bit, but do not use that as a permanent spray or you'll have a bunch of hats that you're going to have to replace for somebody. And I can crank our machine up faster than this. I just don't know if it's worth going any faster than what I'm doing. I don't want to sacrifice the precision of my stitch work that I've got going. I get a lot of questions about adding a back stitch on our work and the way that our machine is set up, I just do an over stitch. So I'll just stitch over whenever, um, of course, like I said, this one is lifting up too because that spray adhesive has already lost its adhesiveness. But anyway, we just overstitch just a little bit. Got a nice, tight, clean stitch on all these hats. So what do y'all think? What is your method? If you've got a sewing machine, what sewing machine do you use? If you've got a heat press, what heat press do you use? What kind of leathers do you guys use? Do y'all use leatherettes or leather? Are you doing any DTF on your leather or any type of fabric? waiting on my bobbin to run out underneath. And 
there it went. The bobbin just ran out. So you get to see how I uh, replace my bobbin. I usually have another tool somewhere, but I don't see it, so just use my scissors. Pan up, and you can see I was sewing something earlier with my white thread, so I got to re install it on my little bobbin carrier up here. So you pull your thread through right there, that way you can get it going. And right here, if you're, I don't know how your bobbin is loaded, but we load ours from directly on the machine and you never want your wheel sitting there when you're loading your bobbin because it'll spin and we've got a rubber wheel and the, the teeth right there will just tear it up. So your needle will still go, but um, Let's get our new bobbin wound on here. And our machine will do a pretty good job of doing it itself, but I like to hold on to the, the thread at the same time just to make sure I can watch it and feel it. Make sure it's loading on there evenly from side to side. So it's not too loose. When it's not getting twisted or knotted up, I'd be able to feel it through my fingers right there. And it'll automatically stop when it gets full, but I like to stop it ahead of time. And then I just trim off an extra little piece from where we started and ours has a little cutter right there so you just slide it and cut it and I'll reload it in the bobbin a lot of times I'll leave our thread hanging there but it'll start bouncing and flopping all around. I don't want it to get caught up in anything. Because sewing machine maintenance is just as important as maintenance on your vehicle. If something goes wrong, you also got to know how to fix it. And I'll start off slow. Anytime I restart, I'll start a few stitches in front of where I left off. I just had a little bit of bobbin that it pulled through on the patch whenever it ran out. You can see that little white thread, so just get rid of that. And we're ready to go again.
And I mentioned we could crank the speed up on this. So right now it's at 600. So let's bump it to 800 and see what happens. That is definitely faster. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can definitely lose control of your sewing machine and get a nice crooked line. And I will say, we did not sew in a straight line when we first started. I remember loading this thing up for the first time with a hat and thread. And I was like, what in the world am I doing? Was this a bad purchase decision? There is no way I'm going to be able to sew these hats. So it definitely takes practice and patience doing these hats. And then I've got <clears throat> these guys here. I don't know if I'm going to do them on the video, but these are going to be a lot slower because I'm going to use the manual setting on these, but I'll just show you um, what I do when I do these. I just I use the, the hand button. No reason to go fast on something like this when you can run right off the edge of the patch. And there's uh, one of my contour stitches right there. Like I said, I've got to still clean and wipe these patches off, but it'll be pretty easy to do on these hats. So, um, let's see, I've got a few more rectangles. Then I'll run through. This is the new Richardson 112 WF, which stands for Workforce. These have been doing really well. The new 112 Workforce has double stitching from Richardson, and then they've got the metal eyelets on them right there. And it's a nice, um, more of a rugged hat, but we keep selling out of those. But the thing I'll notice sometimes is um, a lot of companies they'll have two and three or five and six heat presses or hat presses and hat presses are not cheap well there's cheap hat presses but if you're doing it right you're paying a lot of money for a hat press well over a thousand dollars maybe in the eighteen hundred dollar range something like that so um, our sewing machine was right around $5,000 and we could probably do 10 hats um, and actually let's do a timer. Let's see how fast I can do, let me finish this one. And before I do any bragging, See how many hats I can make in one minute with the speed cranked up.
for time purposes, I'm going to take out the paper backing. All these. I'll go ahead and leave them open. So I'll wait till my watch gets to the 12. Let's see. This hat appears messing me up. So that was just past the minute mark. So that was three hats. I was hoping I could get four. So if you're pressing hats, how many are you getting done in one minute? I don't know if you've got an order of 100 or 200 hats, I'm going to see if I can get four hats in a minute because I've got four of these particular hats left. Fifteen seconds. All right, I'm going to go in three, two, one. Well, that was exactly three minutes, or sorry, that was exactly three hats in a minute on that one. That one went a little sideways right at the end, so get that fixed. Because I don't want to give anybody a cricket patch. Of course, it's the last one. All right, that is our sewing uh, little demonstration. Um, I rambled a lot like I always do, but just wanted to show you our stitch quality on our hats and how things get made here. It is almost five o'clock on a Friday. I'm ready to get out of here. So drop a comment below. This was definitely not a bash video on any other methods. It is just a comparison with time and quality and money.
and we always want you guys to have the best product out there. So just drop a comment um, if you have anything to say. So see you next time. Y'all have a good weekend.